All right, guys, Jason Phillips here, back with you, owner, founder of the Nutritional Coaching Institute. And today we are talking about metabolic adaptation, a big buzzword in the industry. Now, before I explain what it is, why you shouldn't be overly scared of metabolic adaptations, I wanted to share with you the Nutrition Coaches Cheat Sheet. Now, this is a collection of everything I've put together over the course of 16 years of coaching clients and building businesses. It is the education you need, it is the application you need, and it's ultimately the business tactics you need to succeed in this space as a coach or on your own. And just click below this video to get your copy completely for free. While you're doing so, of course, give us that thumbs up. Of course, get yourself subscribed so I can bring you all the information moving forward. Now, let's talk metabolic adaptation. Uh, it is a word that if you're a coach, you probably use it too much. If you're a client, you fear hearing those two words. And let's just get really clear. Metabolic adaptations, they're super normal. They're supposed to happen. We are adaptive human beings. And so what metabolic adaptations are, the body's normal response to effectively change, to navigation away from homeostasis. Now, logically, I ask one question in our level one. I ask everybody, what happens when you start a diet? And everyone's like, oh, your hormones change or your sleep changes or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, no, no. It's not even that complicated. The reality is what happens when you start a diet? You should probably get hungry. You're eating less than you're supposed to. So yes, there will be hunger. By the way, that is good. That is normal. And that means your body is working the way it's supposed to. That is a metabolic adaptation, okay? Your body at that moment though, does begin adapting because your body doesn't understand that diets are temporary. Your body understands that what is happening, the inputs happening right now, it extrapolates that forever. And so if it perceives that it's in a deficit today, it thinks it's going to be in a deficit forever. Now, if you can imagine just for a second being in a deficit forever, what would happen? Well, you'd lose all your body fat, you would lose the insulation of your organs, and ultimately at some point you would die. And no, your body doesn't want to do that. Remember, we are human beings put on this earth to survive, thrive, and procreate. We're not put on this earth to have six pack abs, look really good on the beach and, you know, go out and, and show off and, you know, whatever we're building in the gym. That's just not who, who we are or what we were put on this earth to have. So with that understanding, we need to know that things like hunger are good signs. Things like a little bit of a loss of energy. That's natural. A reduced affinity for NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's natural. At some point, losing a little bit of strength, it probably will happen. What we do need to guard against though, is when these things don't show up. A lot of people I meet with when they start their diets, they're, they're coming to me, they're eating a thousand calories, 1200 calories for whatever reason that's become normal in the dietary industry. And they say, you know, I just can't lose fat on 1200 calories. And I start asking them, well, are you hungry? No, I'm never hungry. Well, you probably need to eat more to lose fat, right? We've all heard those things. Well, I can't eat more because I'm not hungry. Well, that's a bad sign. How are we going to create more of a deficit? Because what your body is telling us by not losing weight at 1200 calories, it has now adapted to that number as being the new set point, as being the new homeostatic balance. And so in essence, we're looking at needing to be at about 700 calories to even begin facilitating the notion of losing weight. But let's not forget about the hormonal repercussions that are coming with it and all of the other issues in your HPA axis that are likely going with it. That's another video for another day. Let's just focus on the adaptations. Understanding that metabolic adaptations are a normal part of, pro uh, normal part of every dietary process, what we are guarding against, coaches and clients, is the issue of becoming metabolically adapted getting to that 1200 calorie standpoint where that is the new normal and where to create a deficit, you have to be at 700 calories. That's what we always need to be guarding against. So how do we do that? Well, very simply. First, we periodize everything. Fat loss diets are totally okay. By the way, getting to very low calorie ranges, totally okay. You'll hear me talk about this in the NCI level ones and level twos. As a coach, if you're getting somebody stage lean, meaning if they're a physique competitor, you might have to take somebody to what we call poverty calories every so often. That's okay, that's just their individual metabolism, but a good coach will not take you there and leave you there to become adapted. A good coach will periodize. There will be a recovery season. There will be an off season, and then there will be a subsequent preseason heading into your next diet. All right, that's the first way we're going to periodize. Number two, we're going to institute diet breaks, all right? A diet should not be one long continuous calorie deficit. If you're going to do it 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 24 weeks, like a lot of the diets that people are prescribing today, make sure you have strategic diet breaks in there. This could be along the lines of the Matador protocol where you spend two weeks in a deficit, two weeks of maintenance. This could be, you know, refeeds, 48 hour, 72 hour refeeds throughout the week. 
This could be a complete week off in the middle of the diet. It doesn't matter what application you use, but it must be present in your diet if you want to see success in terms of guarding against becoming metabolically adapted. Now, ultimately, if you want to get there and that's how you want to live your life and you want to be in super low calories, afraid of gaining weight, never being able to you know, do things like go out to dinner, enjoy a drink with your friends, then I guess that's your choice. And it's my job to inform you as to what metabolic adaptations and the condition of becoming metabolically adapted are. But I hope you don't choose that choice. I hope that you choose to go into a calorie deficit uh, cautiously. I hope that you do choose to implement refeeds and I hope that you do choose to understand what this condition is, what these uh, adaptations are, and ultimately that they're not so bad and that your process probably is going to be okay. Now, if you wanna know more about metabolic adaptation, how to set up diets to avoid them, do me a favor, click the link below this video. That is listed inside the Nutrition Coaching Cheat Sheet and it is yours for free because as always, we are choosing impact over everything.